and I had to revert to scraping the top surface because of the little bow. I first took out here because it was a little bit fat, so I took out the rear because I thought that was the error. Um, falsely so. I should have tested better the top surface and therefore afterwards I had to take that down so take out the bow. That also corrected the the fat reading here. Uh, it was not hard really, at least not that hard. So I managed to scrape it, but I uh, had to dig in a little bit. So I used the uh, hand scraping technique on top here. So I don't know, but maybe this is the only AT300 with a scraped bed. At least that I have seen. Uh, so I decided to flatten down those areas. I mean, the bed was a little bit dipping in the middle, not by much, but at least it's uh, sufficiently soft to be scraped, actually. So that much to be said about a hardened bed. Anyway, I reverted to some hand scraping to get rid of this almost flat blade. Just area scraping. Taking this from the other side. This is under the headstock, anyway, so it doesn't matter really. And the way to, let's say, feel for hinge points is to let it float. I mean, uh, so you know it's in the middle this way, and then also this way, of course, but feel jiggle it like so and on the other side and then you'll see where it's supposed to hinge around 30% in then you shall really remove it there uh, this is where I wanted to get but since it's looking a little bit stupid uh, with no, with some areas non-scraped, I'll take it down and of course improve the areas where I have scraped too much. Okay, putting uh, finishing touches with the hand scraper. I'm just trying to make a pattern on top here, not trying to remove every blue spot now. And in the finishing stages, it's nice to use this yellow canode to get some contrast. So I uh, coat to that and wipe it off. And then the blue in. I also noticed that I have uh, put uh, uh, these under uh, where I think the balance points are. And then hinge it. It's a little bit high in the center. I don't think that mat that is um, at least better than having it bowed dip down. Let me have a little bit to go on if it's bowed the other way. But anyway, and then do it up. Uh, 
And now, you can inspect, starting to be decent, actually. So now testing the bed, really, after having scraped it on top and on the sides and the dovetails. And I've been using this sled here, which has uh, two contact points here, and then run it up and down. And now I'm uh, inclined to test with the saddle itself. I need to reproduce these points here, really, relieving it a little bit in the middle because it tends to rock a bit on me. At least it's probably better to relieve the center to have these pads. Anyway, um, as you may see, I have a, an indicator that follows, so it drags and it's a indicator like this. And I've mounted it, so I have pressure on the dovetail like so and I move it in this direction. I could also and have used this type of indicator just plunging in but this will tend to to be a little bit more nervous. The best way would probably be to use a button indicator here or a button tip. Anyhow this is my setup now. So I will mount the camera so you can follow uh, along here. It's also probably true that uh, it is best to not have the arm on the indicator like I have because this will also produce some flex so it, the measurement can be a little bit, you know, jitter a little bit. But we will see here, starts at zero at the headstock end, moves up. So I have, uh, Two tenths or half and hundreds of a millimeter deviation, one hundredth of a millimeter. So it fluctuates between that. This is now the end travel here. So I have zero, zero, and a little bit plus, which is kind of okay, I guess, because this means that it has some wear resistance. So altogether, one hundredth of a millimeter, that plus minus zero point five, or plus minus two tenths of an inch along the length of the bed, or four tenths. Absolute. Not too shabby.